As we've known for a while now, the Sixers are projected to have a ton of cap space this summer, but the question is, who do they use it on? Well, today we get some more insight as to what their plans could be, and could another super team form itself in Philadelphia? Perfect. What is up, everybody? RB here, back in the house. Welcome into Philly Take with RB. Do me a favor, hit the like button on this video if you do enjoy this content, and subscribe to the show so you don't miss any of the future videos or live streams. Today, we're back, and I know we're in the midst of a tough West Coast trip, and the Sixers are vying for a playoff spot, and they're trying to figure it out, but we got some major bombshell reports yesterday that cannot go unnoticed or untapped. And we need to talk about it because really, since the trade deadline, since the moves were made, we've been talking about, okay, how are we going to project this into the summer when you may only have two guys on the roster? What is your future plan? Because that's all Daryl Morey has preached, you know, for the last year now is this uh, cap space plan, this projected cap space that's going to be oh so lovely. And you're trying to balance that back and forth. So we will get into it all. But my question of the day is, do you think the Sixers should go out and acquire another big star this summer? Should they go and once again try to pair Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey with yet another big player, even if it takes up all of the cap space or most of it, should they try to build their team out that way with essentially another super team? We will get into it all. But before we do that, let me give a shout out to our sponsor of today's video. Shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Southern New Hampshire University. It is 2024 and with a new year comes new goals. If one of your goals this year involves going to college, then I have the perfect opportunity for you. SNHU allows you to turn passion for sports into a degree with their online sports management program. You'll get to learn about the business and economics of sports sports management principles, and how to gather and analyze data. This degree can help you prepare for a career as an athletic director, sports information director, marketing manager, and even other exciting roles in the industry. You'll get to tap into SNHU's network of grads working in sports-related organizations. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degrees in the country. They are radically affordable, and their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation so go down to the description right now of this video, click the link, go to snhu.edu slash Philly Take to request free info about the program and start your new year off on the right path. Upon request, a real person will even hop on a call with you to discuss how the program can benefit you personally. Once again, check it out. Click the link down below snhu.edu slash philly take all right man let's jump into it so what happened yesterday this comes out from mark stein on his sub stack the stein line and shout out to philly sixers galaxy for posting it here on twitter quote this is from mark stein who has a lot of inside sources league sources say the philadelphia continues to loom as an eager paul george suitor should he make it onto the open market the sixers are said to maintain interest in paul george despite the widely held presumption that he and Kawhi Leonard want to keep playing together. The Sixers are projected to have considerable cap space this summer to pursue another star level target before the max contract extension. They are expected to award all-star guard Tyrese Maxey. We'll look more at the Sixers cap situation in a second, but as of right now, roughly, let's say they're projected to have maybe 55, 60, maybe even more million dollars all these, you know, one-year deals and guys that are going to expire, even DeAnthony Melton, who doesn't seem like he's coming back this season, all these guys are going to expire. Really, it's going to come down to Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, who, yes, is going to get a max extension, and maybe B-ball pulled, depending on how far the Sixers go in the playoffs. That's literally their entire roster, so they are going to free up a lot of space, and now the questions start to come in. Do they re-sign Buddy Heald, who they traded assets for at the deadline? Do they bring back Kelly Oubre? What will his price tag be? Nico Batum, Covington, there's a lot of guys out there, and they're going to have to really get creative, and this is the first time that Daryl Morey will have that opportunity to do so. So I put this out last night just as a question. A lot of feedback, a lot of no's, some yeses, and really a lot of just indecisiveness when it comes to this because I said, will the Sixers – or would you be happy if the Sixers signed a 34-year-old PG to a max contract this 
offseason, Joel and B, Tyrese Maxey, and PG-13 as the new core for the next several years. What do we think? What do we think? I think it's very tough. Now, it is kind of funny because we go back to last year's draft. The Sixers didn't have a pick, but, you know, we were all sitting here laughing because uh, of the draft night mystery, right? We all tried to interpret this draft board and, and over here on the right board, all the way to the left, it looks like it says PG. So we know that there has been rumored interest at one point for the Sixers and Paul George and Kyle Newbeck reported it from PHLY Sports yesterday that there he has heard whispers from the inside of, yes, you know, Paul George could be a potential target down the line if he is available. Now, Let's go ahead and look at Paul George. We always look at the contract, right? And he is on uh, a $45 million contract this year. Next year as a player option, but he is obviously expected to decline that because he is about to turn 34 years old next month. And he wants, you know, a four or five year contract so that he can take it all the way to the end of his playing career. So then you sit there and you go, okay, wonderful. Of course, the 76ers have all this cap space for once. For once, they free up the contracts. They don't have Simmons anymore and Al Horford and Tobias Harris. But what do they have? Nobody to use the money on because we go to the top free agents. Here's the NBA free agent tracker on Track. Here are the top five projected free agents in terms of, I guess, talent, age, all that, etc. LeBron James, who, again, could Daryl Morey sway LeBron to come to Philly? Maybe they draft Bronny James. Probably not going to happen, right? Would be a very long stretch unless somehow it just got to the point where, you know, LeBron was swayed to come to Philly, but it's it's hard to see that. Paul George is number two, and he's 34. He's going to be 34. Klay Thompson, who was recently benched, and yes, he has been productive for Golden State off the bench, but it's going to be hard to give him a lot of money this offseason and more years as well, given his injury history. Number four is Tobias Harris, and uh, no, and James Harden is number five, and Pascal Siakam, number six, who's likely going to go back to Indiana. So you sit there and you go, damn, man, like we have all this cap space. Yes, it was a brilliant way to get all this cap space freed up, and you know, you have Joel Embiid, Tyrese Max, you have a wonderful coach, and Nick Nurse, and you have something to build with for the future, but then it's like, who do you use this cap space on? And then you take a step back and you think, all right, well, maybe you should just start building like Denver did, right? There's kind of two ways to build right now. We're seeing the Suns try to go all in and, and build that super team, the Clippers. Then you have teams like Denver who have Jokic and Murray, right? Kind of like Embiid and Maxi, And then they have really solidified role players. But the thing with that is you have to draft well. You have to get guys from within. That way you don't pay everybody at once. So now you're sitting here and you're going, okay, well, if the Sixers who are probably not going to have any good draft picks this year, can't go out and get people. Maybe they re-sign Buddy Hield using his bird rights. Maybe they bring back Kelly Oubre. But do they have enough? Can they really be potent in the Eastern Conference? And the answer may be no. And I honestly could see Daryl Morey, given his history, going out and signing Paul George to a max contract. What do you think? Paul George for four years on a max? Let's go ahead and look at an article from Liberty Ballers. Shout out to Brian Taporic. He put this out. And uh, he confirmed the interest from uh, Kyle Newbeck about Paul George. And from the Substack that Mark Stein put out says, there are suspicions that subsequent offers to Paul George have fallen an unknown amount shy of the numbers in Leonard's extension. Because keep in mind, the Clippers did extend Kawhi Leonard, but Paul George still has not been given a contract extension and they're waiting and they're waiting. And obviously it's past the deadline now. But it says George likely wants closer to a full four-year max contract where Leonard took roughly $10 million less than the max he was eligible to receive. If extension negotiations eventually break down between George and the Clippers, the Sixers predictably will be sniffing around per Mark Stein. And again, you know, Paul George, okay, you bring him to Philadelphia, but you're going to have to pay him a lot of money. Does it make sense from a basketball standpoint? Yes, it does. I do think it does. And... I think actually, when you think about Paul George and his game, it fits perfectly with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid. He's a guy that can create at all three levels, can get his own shot when needed. Pretty pretty good playmaker, better than Tobias Harris at least. He's a better rebounder. He's definitely a better defender. And if there's a night where, say, Maxey's off, then Paul George can take the reins and go drop 30 points. He's also never played with a guy like Joel Embiid. And I I think the basketball fit would be incredible. But as it all comes down to the Sixers, can he stay healthy? 
He's getting older. He's had injuries before. And, you know, if the Sixers do offer this guy a max when he's, what, 38 years old, he's probably going to be making like $60 million a year. And we just know that that is not a sign of success for the future. So they would probably have to end up moving that contract or taking a hit. Really, it's do you want to go all in for a year of Paul George? Do you want to go in, try to make this work, pay money to a, a big star? And I know a lot of people off the bat are saying no, 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 which I understand their frustration. But again, you have to show a level of success building through the draft. And the Sixers just have not done that right now. And when you look at the free agents this upcoming summer, it's it's a pretty weak class overall. So it's frustrating. I don't know. I don't think the Clippers are really going to go far in the playoffs. and. I do think that, you know, Steve Ballmer will try to pay Paul George. If you look at the history of Steve Ballmer and the Clippers, he usually does end up shedding out that money at some point. But does he really want to keep running it back with James Harden, who will probably fade in the playoffs, and Kawhi Leonard, who can't stay healthy anymore when it matters? I don't know the answer to that question. They have said that PG is comfortable in L.A. and his family's there. And, you know, it's just kind of his place. He's very comfortable. I believe he's from there. So, you know, it it is a tough draw to come all the way across the country. But if he does want a chance to win, maybe Maxi, PG, and Joel Embiid can all get one healthy season. And uh, it would be pretty intense basketball. I think that would be an instant title contender, if healthy, of course, right? PG could take a huge load off of Joel Embiid and and Tyrese Maxi. And we know, unlike Tobias, who will come out and drop seven points and, and three rebounds, PG usually will not do that. He's starting to heat up recently, and I guess it all just depends how far the Clippers go in the playoffs. But if there are no other options, I I could see Daryl Morey once again swinging for the fences. At the end of the day, do you want to see Paul George with the Philadelphia 76ers? Give me your thoughts down below. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That being said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.